final tutorial where we're building a quick resume project in React. Now in this video, we're going to turn the app that we left off uh, in our second video into this completed app here. And if you haven't watched the first two videos, I'll leave a link down in the description so you can do that. Now with that being said, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and let's get started right away. So inside of Atom, we're going to open up our BFS Visualize Node project, or sorry, React project, and we're going to start creation of our obstacles. So we're going to make it so um, these bordering obstacles and all these here are just permanent and we don't have to create them like we do right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste these values in here. You can go ahead and get these from the code I left down in the description. And this is essentially just our obstacles here. It's the coordinates of all these points that you see. So now let's initialize our or set our obstacles equal to dummy obstacles. And we also have to add a few um, more values in here. Now we need to create a player position um, inside of our constructor here. And the player position is just going to be the location that we're moving around the board. So if I was to click here, the player position is now this hexagon. If I click here, the player position is now this hexagon. And this will help us traverse the canvas. Okay, now let's also create another value that we're going to call this came from. And what this is going to do is store our hexagons starting from our player position. So we'll say came from, and we'll just initialize it empty right there. Now, a third and fourth variable we're going to create here is going to be called hex path map and the path. So the hex path map right here is essentially going to store all of our accessible hexagons. So basically, it's everything minus the obstacles. And for our path, this is just going to store the path that we need to highlight between our current mouse cursor and the selected player position. Okay, so we're all set here. We can hit Control S. And now let's change our add obstacles method down here into draw obstacles. Because we don't need to add them anymore, we simply just need to draw them. So we can get rid of this code here, and we'll write this following code. Okay, so essentially here we're just um, getting our coordinates, the Q, R, and S, and the X and Y values and we're drawing the hexagon and making it black. So let's go and call this method up in our uh, component did mount method. So right here at the bottom, we can say this dot draw obstacles. And now I don't believe it will work, but let's see. Oh, it did, perfect. So yeah, so when we click, we have no longer an add obstacles, but you see that it did work there. So let's actually get rid of that in our handle click method. Control F, handle click right here. So we'll get rid of this line of code. Okay, so now let's actually create a new canvas here so we can implement our breadth for search. So this canvas is going to be called our canvas view. Okay, and now let's initialize its width and height up in our component did mount. So in here, we can just come down here and say, all right, looks good. And now let's create a function called get neighbors. And this is gonna use, or this is going to be used in our breath first, <laughs> breath first search method. And it's gonna store all of our neighbors in an array. So we'll go down here, add it to the bottom. And this will simply be called get neighbors. All right, this looks good. So essentially, we're just getting the neighbors, all six neighbors of our hexagon, and saving them into an array. So now we can create the breadth first search function method, whatever you would like to call it. Let's create that right now. Okay, so in here we initialize a variable called frontier and this is just going to take on our player position wherever that coordinate is. We have our came from right here and we're simply initializing it with the player position for now. And if the player position or frontier.length is not equal to zero, so pretty much always, then we're going to create an array here and we're going to get the neighbors of our 
uh, current hexagon, and we're essentially going to map all those neighbors to our array, and thus we will create a path. So now let's go into our draw hexes function and create our hex path map array, and we're going to use a variables um, called bottom h and top h, and what they're going to do is essentially get all of our um, hexagons that are not obstacles on the bottom half and on the top half. So let's go in here and rearrange this code. Okay, so we're done here and basically underneath this commented code for each of our for loops, we have um, created our bottom age variable and essentially if um, our obstacles are not part of our hex path map, then we're going to push whatever is Okay, so we're done here, and be sure that we have underneath this commented code the bottom h variable, then we have the q minus p, and we're passing in our qr and s values. It's going to be the same exact ones as right here and for our commented code, and we did the same. Don't forget to change top h, uh, and this will be q plus n, and we have another top h right here. So now we have to add a little bit of code to the bottom of our draw hexes function and this is basically just going to allow us to manipulate the state on the spot. So let's go right under or right before our last brace and we're going to add this code here. Okay, so right here we're just changing our state and calling breath first search on our current player position. Now we have to initialize our hex path map uh, value right up here and we'll say var. Okay, let's hit control S, take a look and unexpected token here. Now I believe what we actually have to do is add a little bit of code to our um, draw hexes method that we forgot to add. So, or I'm sorry, and component did mount. And let's go up here. And so right under get canvas position, we're going to add this following line of code. Okay, here, so we're just drawing our uh, canvas interaction board using our player position to get the point, And we're using the black and gray color when we are drawing our hex. Now let's hit control S and look. I, it could very well be just be a typo I have down in the render function. Yeah, so let's go take a look down here. Okay, and it looks like actually all of this is good. So I believe we just simply forgot our um, our brace here for our while loop. And actually while we're at it, we do have to add another piece of code uh, to the bottom of this. And we're just basically going to set our state uh, to what we need it after we're using the breath first search algorithm. Okay, so what we did here is just essentially assign our new came from value to the one in our state. And now let's hit control S and see if this works. It shouldn't be anything new than our last load, but we don't have any errors. So that's really good. Now let's create the next part, which is the get path function. Now we have to um, also draw our path, but first we're going to get the path. So let's create the get path function. Okay, so here we're using our, um, looks like this is a little bit messed up here. We're using our um, start and current values to get the path in between them. So essentially we're assigning our new path right here from what we got by utilizing our start, current, and came from values inside of our if statement here. Now that we have our, um, actually it looks like, we should have another brace here, maybe. Ah, no, we just actually put this uh, outside of the if statement. It should be inside. Okay, now we're all set here, and let's move on to drawing our path. So this method will be called draw path. Okay, so this method is getting our 
path from our state, which we um, assigned right here. We assigned our new path, and we are getting that path here, and that's going to be our, our array. So for the entire amount of the array, we are getting our Q, R, and X, and Y values from each member of the path, and subsequently we are drawing the hex in the blue color. Okay, so now in our should component update, we have to actually call this method. So let's go up here. Inside should component. And right inside of our first if statement, um, right here, we are going to write the following. And actually, we can go ahead and get rid of pretty much this code here because draw path will essentially um, just uh, replace all of this code here. So let's actually go like this and we will say this dot draw path. Okay, so our draw path is essentially replacing all the code we just deleted, like I said, and we can also get rid of this line here because we do not need that anymore. And now down below, we actually need to write essentially the same as this, except we're going to be looking at next state that came from is not equal to this state that came from. So we're using current hex right here, but now we need to compare the states. So underneath here, we are going to write the following code. Okay, so in this if statement that we just created, essentially what's happening here is we're comparing the came from value from our next state to the came from value from this state. And what that means is we are comparing the values. Um, let me open up the app. We're comparing, say, this value here of our current path. And then when we move the mouse up one, we have a new path. So this is going to be our next state. And we have to redraw these other hexagons back to gray. They can't just stay blue. So that's what this um, if statement is doing right here. So you notice I commented out the draw arrow function because that is our last function that we are going to make. It's going to draw the little arrows in the background so we can visualize breadth first search. Now to get this working, we have to, um, if you notice, if you hit control S and go back to our app, it's not working. And basically that means we have to fix our handle mouse move method. So let's go to that. Handle mouse move right here so what we have to do in here is simply add this line of code all right so here we are just getting our path and we are passing in all the necessary variables so this will subsequently draw our path for us now let's hit Control s and see our app perfect we got the breath for search working just great now what we have to do is actually get the arrows on the screen and change our handle click method to switch our player position. So let's quickly do that. Now the draw arrow function, we will just go down here to the bottom and we'll put it right here. I'm just going to copy and paste this code. You can find it on the um, code that I left down in the description of the video. It's just kind of a method that's going to draw our path for us and use a lot of, um, you know, math things and kind of just gibberish. So we don't really need to know about how this function works, but it will draw our path for us in our given colors. Now let's change our handle click method. So when we uh, click a new hexagon, our position changes. All right, so inside of here, we're going to write the following code. Okay, so this is our new handle click method. We're just getting our current hexagon, our came from value, our row, column, and S value, and we're recalling the breath first search upon a new click. So before we actually run this, let's go up to our, um, wherever we wrote the arrow function. So inside of our should component update, comment this out, hit control S, and let's look at our app. Perfect. So this is the completed breath first search 
app. Now we can also take this a step further and whenever we click we can have the uh, little hexagon traverse the path over to our node that we clicked. We can add a bunch of different things here so let me know in the comments if you guys want me to further um, post videos and make this even look cooler. Anyways, don't forget to hit like and subscribe again, and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next tutorial video.